Because when you want an acting job, it's it's not that you, just that you want to act. I mean, there's all kinds of things that go along with that. You want to be challenged. You want to feel connected to other creative people. You want community. You need money. There's so much around that. And I try really hard to be like, what aspect of that in this moment are you really looking for? And is there a way that you can give that to yourself in another capacity? And the answer is usually yes. Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. Grace Rex is an actor. I sat down with her in her home in Brooklyn to talk about the work. Do you have a typical way to begin your private work with a script? Uh, I mean, I guess I read it multiple times. I think I try to read it as a, uh, an audience person, mm. like from the, not from the perspective of trying to unpack the character necessarily, mm -hmm. but just from trying to understand what the story is, how the character fits into that, what their, um, what purpose they serve for moving the story along and telling the story that the writer wants to tell. And then it really depends on what it is. Like sometimes you read something and you just kind of get it. Like it, it makes sense. Yeah. You feel like you could crawl inside of it right away. Yeah. And sometimes I feel a little more distant from it or uh, it just doesn't quite click. I, don't, I feel like I don't quite know what that person's perspective is or how they move through the world. And then in that case, I guess I would, uh, I would uh, just spend a lot of time thinking about it. That's the biggest thing I do, I guess. Just think about things a lot. Do you ever hit like a wall with like, I can't, I can't figure out how to get my arms around this? Yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, wh um, what do you do? Um, freak out. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, again, I guess it really depends on. It's funny we're talking it about is. this, but but I mean, the director should be there to help you. Yeah. With yeah. that. Part. Yeah, I'm making it sound like so. you're all alone. I mean, you are alone in the beginning, but I'm starting to get the idea that, like, from actors, that you're kind of alone a lot, even though there's a director. Yeah, I mean, I. I I think it really depends on the director too. Like I think some directors establish a dynamic right away where having conversations about the character is is part of their process, um, mm -hmm. and that can be really inviting and wonderful. But again, that really depends too. Like sometimes I have this feeling like I don't want to talk about it. Like I don't want to intellectualize it. I don't want to like knead through it and decide, you know, what the emotional experience yeah. moment to moment is. I just, I want to like play. Like I want to get mm -hmm. inside of it and just play. Uh, I guess if I did run into a wall though, having a conversation would be helpful. And sometimes that's possible and sometimes it's not. I think with TV, oftentimes it's harder just because there's so little time. It feels kind of like this, this moving machine yeah. And it's like a spinning hamster wheel, and my job is to like leap on with the yeah. other hamsters and like yeah. pick up at the same pace. I'll that's, end a great, that metaphor. Um, that's a great analogy. I mean, it depends on where you are with the show. Like, if you're, you know, you're doing a pilot or something, and everybody's figuring it out together, they're figuring out the tone and the world of it, and you're able to infuse the char character with a lot of who you are as a person because there's space for that, mm -hmm. then, you know, maybe it feels more exploratory and you can, you can have conversations about who that person is and uh, where they've been and how they feel and all that. But um, I think particularly with stuff like guest stars or, mm -hmm. which is most of my experience with TV is like kind of coming into something um, that's really already established. It's so much of it is just about feeling the, the tone, feeling the rhythm of what it already is, sometimes already having seen some of it, mm -hmm. um, and just kind of diving in and trying to be the cog in the wheel that I am and like help, help tell the story.
Give me an idea of how you gotten into all this. I studied uh, musical theater at uh, Ball State University. And um, before that, I was a dancer. I was a ballet dancer. And I, I loved to sing, and I wanted to act. So I thought I would like do all those things simultaneously, uh, which translated to musical theater. But I got into school and kind of quickly realized that I didn't like love a lot of musicals. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love musical. I think there's something really uh, transcendent about what singing can do to text. It can kind of just catapult an emotional, mm -hmm. you know, experience that sometimes words alone can't do. Um, but I, I knew that I was never going to be like a, like a Broadway star or something like that, which in my limited view as like an 18 year old person in college, like that's what what seemed was available. Yeah. Um, so uh, I knew I was going to be a chorus girl. Like I was a singer and I had kind of like a folky, lilty voice. Like I didn't have a big, like a big set of character pipes, which were the kind of parts that I played. Mm -hmm. So about halfway through, I started kind of leaning more into the, the acting side of things, which I really enjoyed. And then I, I got an agent when I was in college in Chicago and I started going there and auditioning for things. And, and in Chicago, like a lot of the stuff that your agents send you out for is film and TV stuff because the theater community is so tight knit that it, it feels like it's more accessible through like word of mouth and mm -hmm. going to general auditions and like I would like crash equity calls and stuff like that. So the, the things that I was going out for were like film and TV things and I got really into that and I enjoyed it so much and I went through a breakup and I did a pilot and those things kind of hap happen simultaneously. Mm -hmm. And my my agents in Chicago, who are wonderful people, were like, "Fly, little birdie, you have no tether. You should you should go out there if you're going to do it. It would, yeah. it would be good to do it now." At this point, you probably have like a a set thing you do for an audition. Is there a way you like pump yourself up for it? Or yes, yes. It's not always the same. It, it really depends on how much time I have. Like here's an, like mm. last night, for instance, I got a, a, a self-tape request mm -hmm. at 10 p.m. Wow. That was due today <laughs> at 5. Insane, yeah. And a, and a pilot hour-long drama. Didn't have time to read the script, to be totally honest. Like I got about 15 pages in, and then I was like, well, I have two hours today to do this. I have to find a reader to come over mm -hmm. and do it with me. I have to like make myself look like a human being. Yeah. And uh, so I'm going to like glean what I can and then and work on the lines as much as I can, but really just very quickly make some choices about who this person is. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to make choices that feel instinctively like they like they work. Again, sometimes with an audition, like you get something and I just am like, oh, I know what that is. I know who that is. It feels natural. It's just like something I can put on mm -hmm. and like have a lot of fun with and kind of play. And sometimes I feel like I'm taking a stab in the dark, but I have done it enough. I think that I trust myself to be like, we don't know what this is, but like, I feel, I feel okay in this space of not quite knowing mm -hmm. and I'm just going to do, I'm going to do my best. Sometimes you have more time and then, you know, you can really dig into it and get the words in your body and that's nice. That feels like a luxury. I just think a lot and I try, I mean, I get the words in my head, but a lot of times I, unless it's really text heavy, you know, it's like some like you're in Sorkin-y thing or something. Like I... I spend so much more time just thinking about who they are, you know, mm -hmm. and and the purpose they serve and, and what's happening in the scene and what emotionally needs to be accomplished in the scene. And that way, if I walk in and I feel really out of sorts or the energy's really weird, you know, that somebody's really tired and mm -hmm. 
doesn't really want to be there anymore, which I understand. I wouldn't want to watch 50 people do the same thing over and over again. Then like I, I just, I'm grounded. Yeah. And then I can bend, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. that helps a lot. That's really changed the way that I experience auditioning, mm -hmm. which is a bizarre, just the most bizarre thing. It really is. It's like kind of acting, but not, it's not nice. really acting. I'm glad it exists. Like I wouldn't want people to only cast their friends because yeah. then I, I'd only ever get like three jobs. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm glad that they're open and they're like, let's have all these folks mm -hmm. give it a go. Mm -hmm. Like I, I'm very appreciative that there's accessibility, but it is, it is really frustrating. I'm sure if there was a better way to do it, somebody would have probably come up with it by now. Are you good at gauging if you did good? Like in other words, when you leave a, an audition, yeah. are you ever like, wow, I really blew it, and then you get it, or the opposite? Sometimes I feel like, uh, wow, I really fit the specs of that. A lot of it's sort of topical. It's like I was the right age, and I kind of look like what I feel like maybe they're looking for, mm -hmm. and it just fits me, and I feel like I, you know, I, I, I get it, and I could, you know, hit it out of the park without having had a lot of preparation time. Um, I, get, I mean, I have had experiences too where I was like, "Whoa, that was really bad," um, and then maybe I, you know, I got, I got it, or I got close to getting it, or something. So, I mean, you know, I would love to believe that I know. <laughs> what, what other people want, but uh, I think that's just the control freak in me wanting to be able to like uh, figure out the outcome of something. Mm -hmm. Most of the time, I, I have no idea. I don't, and they don't always know. I mean, that's the thing too. They have no idea a mm -hmm. lot of the times too. They're sort of waiting for people to come in and maybe give them what's in their head. Mm -hmm. oh. Like I've had that happen a lot where it, it feels personally like I spent so many hours preparing for this. I did my hair. I'm wearing concealer. I took a train. It was it was an hour long and then I got here and I waited for 45 minutes and then I went into the room and it was like so anticlimactic. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that like a lot of times the material is anticlimactic. Mm -hmm. Like the thing you were asked mm -hmm. to, to do was not that exciting. And that's not your fault. That's yeah. just what it was. It was like yeah. five lines on law and order or something. Yeah, yeah. Procedural. And you wanna like, like yeah. fill it with your entire being. You're like, <laughs> I wanna be seen. And yeah. that's not gonna happen because nobody cares. It, you know what I mean? And then you leave and you're like, yeah. wow, that was, that was not the, the <laughs> the uh, experience that like I really needed yeah. to have in that moment, which was um, yeah. a moment of true expression. And, rap and rap rapturous. Yeah, yeah, that was like exposition. Yeah. <laughs> that Deliver. happens a lot. I have to remind myself all the time, like yeah. now just remember, like we're gonna go there and like yeah. it's just gonna happen. Yeah. And even if it's, I'm like the best office clerk Mm -hmm. In the whole world, mm -hmm. the casting director did not have a responsibility to tell me, like, how great I was or to even blink. Yeah. He, she yeah. is probably going to be like, okay, great. Thank you. Yeah. I have to remind myself of yeah. that. And that doesn't mean you weren't great. Right. Like, you could have been really great and you might get the job. Right. But I think that that kind of, like, circles back to that thing we were saying about whether you can gauge... Mm -hmm. how well it went mm -hmm. is you're just having a, you're having a totally different experience than the people who are watching you who have like probably been there yeah. all day long. And even if you were really great or even if you weren't great, like how they, how they receive you in that moment or how they respond is, is like, you just can't tell. You just have, yeah. I have no idea most of the time. What if there was just like a hugger that was hired? sitting there smiling at you and then you're, it's over and they hug you and you leave. Yeah, the that people would be can, so nice. Other people can be like, whatever they're being, they're worrying about the food and never, but the hugger has to, it's the job to be happy. Yeah. I that, would, that would be good, right? 
I would love that. I do, um, I, uh, my comfort thing is, um, you know, after a particularly difficult one or one that I just, I worked really hard on and then I'm like, all right, it's, it's over. It's out in the, it's not up to me anymore. Mm -hmm. I definitely go and like buy a chocolate macaroon, very specifically. And I sit down and I enjoy it. Yeah. And I kind of reward myself. That's how I, that's how I reward myself is with food. Just give yourself a little pat on back. Yeah. Like you did it. Yeah. I hug myself is what I'm saying, Peter. <laughs> I'm imagining that you get frustrated with comedy. I, I don't know why. Is yeah. this a, is this a, is that that a weird thing to to for someone to that imagine? I get frustrated with comedy. Yeah, I think you're ahead of most comedy. Oh boy. Well, that's a compliment. Yeah, it is. I'll take it. Do you think you are? Uh, no. I mean, no. I, I guess I'm no. <laughs> 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 no, I'm right, right with it, Mr. Rinaldi. No, 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 no. I am trying oh. to, well, I'm trying to. I'm imagining you make bold comedic choices. I've seen them. I think people who, who like how I do what I do are, are likely to hire me. So maybe that's what they, I don't know if that's what they want from me. But I don't, I, I just. I just make choices. I don't know how to talk about it. I yeah, I don't I don't think of them as be like the choices that I make as being like particularly uh, subversive or different. Mm -hmm. I think I just have a certain sense of humor and like my you know my dad is really funny. Um he can be a total he can be a total goofball and um my sister is really funny and my brother is really funny and I think we get we all get together and we have it's sort of a weird sense of humor maybe mm -hmm. and so but I don't know how to talk about it because I don't know I don't know I just do I just do what I feel I feel is right and sometimes you can get into a situation where somebody is like yeah whatever do what you want like mm -hmm. go just go with it mm -hmm. and that's really that's really fun. But uh, yeah, I've never, I've, I think if somebody was like, mm, that seems kind of weird. And I'm not everybody's cup of tea, you know? Some people don't want that. Right. That um, whatever, whatever I, I decide feels, feels right or most interesting for me. Uh, and then they, then they just don't hire me, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about like, I, I, I'm fascinated with what actors need, like, on the set. Do you need a certain kind of environment, or do you thrive in a certain kind of environment as opposed to another kind of environment? Yeah, yeah, I definitely... I definitely like working with directors who are excited to be there. You'd think that's a given. Right. <laughs> but it doesn't always feel like that. Or there's just a lot of... It's stressful. It's a stressful job. And sometimes I get a little annoyed when people talk about actors like they're like weird fairies or something, that like these mysterious beings that can't be pinned down. But as a result of being on, on, on some sets where I don't feel safe uh, and I know how that affects my work, I do feel like they have special needs. Like maybe we have special needs. Like we're just very vulnerable. Like it's just so vulnerable. And your job is to be vulnerable and to be open, you know? And it's one thing to be a crew person or something and to be treated really unfairly or to have, you know, an argument or something and, and that's not okay. But you can also like be pissed and like put your little hat on and keep pushing your buttons all day and do your job. That's and right. when you're an actor, you can't do that. And if you ask somebody to compartmentalize how they're feeling in the moment so they can do a kind of performance that's, that's like n n not on that level, then that can affect whether you're able to do your job or not. So I think I like being around directors who are just present and kind and have a perspective like we're not curing cancer we're making a movie even if it's a dramatic movie yeah. 
Um, and like, this should be fun. Like, I really believe it should be fun. And I think there's a way to get what you want and create an environment that's like passionate and focused mm -hmm. without um, shitting on people. And that, that really bothers me. I just feel like, I feel like it's childish and kind of irresponsible. It makes it difficult and unpleasant for everybody. And I, I mean, I've been really fortunate. I've worked with mostly people who are wonderful mm. and really excited about what they're doing, really interested in uh, like having a positive and fruitful experience and being able to like be present for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And what, what do you need from a director in the moment in, in your work? Like what, what kind of approach works for you? I guess I just need somebody to help me feel like like we're in it together and that they that they trust me. And I think there are lots of ways that people do that. It kind of depends. Like sometimes if I feel like I'm in a tough spot, it's great to be able to be like, hey, I just can't figure this out. Like, can we have a little conversation or just to answer a question that I have. Um, and then there are some directors who will completely leave you alone, mm -hmm. um, which is also great sometimes. It's hard to, I don't know, it's like, I think it's just an essence thing. Like you can just feel when you're interacting with somebody who, who is like excited and knows what they're doing. They know yeah. what their vision is. And they know how you fit into that. And they're able to like communicate what they need mm -hmm. or they're able to be like, let's just see what happens. Uh, but I think it's just a feeling that you get from somebody about whether or not they're available. Let's talk about one scene in particular. Oh my goodness, okay. Now, one moment from Women Who Kill, which I love. I love Women Who Kill. Oh, it's so Yeah, Sheila Van was on my show, and I, never, I didn't see this movie until recently. I'm, I'm talking about just the moment where you say, don't tell me. Now tell me. I think that's the exact line. Try to stay calm. God, what? Wait, don't tell me. Okay, tell me. And it has this pause. Yeah. When you deliver that, I, I mean, like, it, you know, it, it, there's an experience that goes on. I want to know now, like, what, what, how you manufactured this. Is that a combination of, like, you and Ingrid Youngerman figuring that out? Or is it in the script? Or is this just you deciding how to present that? Oh, shit, Peter. I, I can't remember. Okay. We're, no, we're wait, done. No, we're no, done. no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, well, I will say that, you know, that script is amazing. I mean, that script was perfect. Mm -hmm. So that takes, I mean, that, that takes all of the weight off of me. I mean, mm -hmm. there's very little you have to do. And that's a great feeling to be like, this, t this text is, there's all, it's all in the text. So I have to, subtlety is, uh, is the is part of the tone of kind of, of baked in. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's baked into it. And yeah. and then and and she's also she's the she's the vision, the visionary and she's also sitting ac across from me. So it just felt like really cohesive and I can't I I'm, I know she told me to pause. But I can't remember why I moved through it like that except that I do know that that character just made sense to me like I just mm -hmm. I, I loved her and I was rooting for her and I loved how sweet and open and interested she she was and and also scared and vulnerable and mm -hmm. um, when a script or when a director says pause but you don't just pause and I think this is what I'm trying to figure out from actors that's why I want to talk about this moment I don't understand what you were doing there, and you don't even remember, so you, know, I think you have a brain problem. But I don't understand what you did to at least make me think 
she has a reason why she's pausing. Did you make a, a conscious decision of what that pause was all about for your... Yeah, I'm going to guess that I made a conscious decision. <laughs> well, probably because it's a timing thing. It's like yes. it, the pause is written into the script, but I, I know that in order for that to, to land, because it is a joke, yeah. that she's like, they have this important thing they need to tell her. And then, you know, she, she pauses to take a, a private moment in a not private space, like in order for it to really be funny. It's got to go on for a, a length of time that everyone else in the room becomes like a little bit uncomfortable. I feel really fortunate thus far that I've been able to do like a lot of different kinds of things. I'd say more often than, the, than not, I. I play sort of funny women, but there's also been like, I've gotten to do like some more dramatic stuff, which has been nice. I think in general, I'd just like to have a little bit more leverage, like a little bit more choice in the things I, I do. Yeah, that would be. That would be good. And, what, and what does that mean? Like meaning you creating your own content or meaning you get to choose from options. Like, I just like to be in a position where there's more opp opportunity. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of opportunity. Like, I audition my, my face off. I audition a lot. And sometimes I get jobs, and most of the time I don't. That's sort of how it works. And sometimes I get offered things, which is wonderful. Um, but there does sometimes feel like there's this hurdle that I have to mm -hmm. get over in order to be in a place where I just have more choice in the things that I can do. And I do say no, like saying no is a powerful thing, but um, sometimes that feels difficult <laughs> given like just the reality of uh, the reality of my reality mm -hmm. at the moment. Um, and that kind of also, that goes up and down. Like, it, it changes all the time. I mean, I get, I have had a, a, a weird, you know, string of things over the past few years where I've been, like, replaced in things, mm. um, which is really complicated. That's like a, I have a, I have a lot of coping mechanisms for not getting attached to things. Like, I think I have a really familiar relationship with failure and rejection. It's like an old friend. Mm. I know really well how to deal with that feeling. Mm. But dealing with, like, being attached to something and then, like, being replaced because the financer wanted somebody who was more famous or something like that. Like, that level of rejection, I, I don't know how to deal with. Yeah. I just don't have a system in place for how to deal with that kind of loss. That's like a newer problem though. I mean, yeah. I think, and it's the kind of a problem that I just didn't, is just a reality of the business, particularly in independent film. It's very hard to get films financed. Yeah. And I don't think that's filmmaker's fault. That's, that's just what the industry is like. You know, that, that just makes it difficult. But it's not, it was never a, the kind of a problem that I thought existed. Like, my, my feeling was always like, oh, I'm part of the community. Like, I have these collaborators. I have people that I want to work with, and they want to work with me. And, like, so we get to do it. We get to work together. And that's, that's not really how it works. I do create my own content. I mean, I try, I try as much as I can to create opportunity for myself. And sometimes that's just about making things so that I can sustain the ability to audition all the time, which is mm -hmm. exhausting and not cathartic. Mm -hmm. And so I know that if I, if I have this other outlet, if I have this other thing that takes up, takes up my time and my energy and is like interesting and pushes me and I get to have ownership and agency over it, then I will have the emotional space to put myself yeah. out there all the time in that yeah. way. It's almost like the acting, like the actual acting that I do is like, I'm gonna use another metaphor. It's like a little, it's like a little bunny. 
is like a little baby bunny in a basket. And I gotta protect that baby bunny. So I like put other things in there and I make it really soft and cushy and I protect it yeah. so that when I get to do that thing, yeah. it's free. Yeah. And you know, and I, I can be there for that. And, and it doesn't have to feel precious. It can just feel like my job. Mm -hmm. But I do a lot of other, like most of my life is, is like protecting the bunny by like trying not to like squeeze it to death, to like suffocate it until it dies. I don't want to mm -hmm. kill it, you know? It can't yeah. be everything. Yeah. You've got to have other things. Because when you want an acting job, it's, it's not that you, just that you want to act. I mean, there's all kinds of things that go along with that. You want, you want to be challenged. You want to feel connected to other creative people. You, you want community. You need money. Like, there's so much around that. And I try really hard to be like, what aspect of that in this moment are you really looking for? And is there a way that you can give that to yourself in another capacity? And the answer is usually yes. Yeah, that's really interesting. No, I, 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 I think that that's great. Here's my analogy. You're, fi you're filling like the, the well or something like that with other thing. No, I don't like that analogy. No, I know that was, uh, yeah. yeah. No, I get it. Yeah, you know, I see you know what I mean? Like, like, it has to be, there's a certain level that has to be filled, but, but like if you go in there with no water, like you want that to fill it. Yeah. But, but if you're doing it on your own, like it fills it up to a certain spot. So you're yeah. not going in there empty. Yeah. I mean, I guess that's true in like relationships too, yeah. you know? You yeah. don't want to need somebody to yeah. light you up. Oh, yeah. That's like codependence. <laughs> yeah. You know, you don't want to have that. I don't want to have that kind of a relationship with, with my work because then, it, yeah, you just kill it. That's big right there because... I think people can, can understand that. You have to love yourself. Oh, yeah. I mean, and you have to feed your actor self. Mm -hmm. Don't let these people feed that. Let that be the gravy. Yeah, no, totally. I mean, that's really true. That's it one. took me a long time to learn that. Like, because you just get tired of feeling like helpless, like a helpless victim who's like when when will i get a chance when will i get a shot and you don't even really know what you what you want like it took me a long time to develop taste too to get really opinionated mm -hmm. about the kind of work that i like and i don't like like i think i came in i mean maybe just as a human being like open and 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 wanting you know wanting to be needed or wanting to be seen and that, that kind of desire to have a place and to feel like I belong kind of overrode being decisive about, you know, it's okay to have, st have standards. Yeah. It's okay to have taste. It's okay to say no. I mean, that's kind of the acting version of it, but I guess like just the human being version of that is like having self-worth, yeah. which I, I did not come out having. I know children, particularly children from New York, who seem to be imbued with this sense of self mm -hmm. that's incredible. They yeah. just they just come into the room and they're like, blah, 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 blah. And this is how I think about this, even if I have no idea what I'm talking mm -hmm. about. And I just, I think that's incredible. But I did not, I did not have that. I was very interested in who do I need to be in the room right now in order to survive and adapt mm -hmm. and be accepted and a, kind of a, a fractured idea of, of my identity. Mm -hmm. And it's taken me a long time to, uh, to be like, I don't, I don't want to rely on other people to give me a sense of self. Yeah. Like, I want to yeah. have that for myself. It's so liberating, especially with making work making movies and, and, and writing and all of that. It's so, it's so liberating to, to be like, I don't know what this is, but it's mine. It's my pile of poo. I made it and it's full of me and I didn't need anybody else to provide it. I did it for myself. I just, I, I like totally get off on that. 
it's like such a wonderful feeling. Because as an actor, I mean, it's hard for me to define which which parts of that are just uh, aspects of 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 me and like yeah. my innate neediness, and how much of that is just the system, which is that there are too many actors and not enough jobs, and it just leads to a feeling of like somebody give me a chance and I, I just hate that feeling yes. I'm so tired of it it's a horrible it's a horrible space through which to look at the look at your day yeah I'm not interested in it at all yeah it is really nice when somebody gives you gives you a chance but then I'm able to like really be decisive and and enjoy it and we are talking about codependence, Peter. Yeah. That's what we're talking right. about. I That's don't right. want to be in a codependent relationship That's with right. my work. Yes. That's the only sustainable way for me to be an actor. I love that. Grace Rex, thank you. Peter and Aldi, thank <sighs> you. What a friggin' treat. To One is a production of Filmmaker Magazine, which is a publication of IFP, the Independent Filmmaker Project.